Yeah. Are we okay to carry on? Thank you. Look at our H. Good to go. All right. Uh, we'll call the. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. I always never ever think of Jeff. Coming to the whole meeting uh, to order at 6.35 p.m. on uh, August 22nd, 2016. Number one is public works and maintenance. 1.1 1 .1 is parking. Actually, I'm going to take the easy way out. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Gibb. So in the last few weeks, we had people are still seem to have issues around parking. As we know from the variation request, and I know we put in two-hour parking, which is great. There's still an issue, and I think it impedes some of our growth downtown. So I was suggesting the two options. One, look at approaching OCN, in particular maybe sending a letter to their general manager, Joan Naquana Capile, about expanding their parking beside the library building. In order to have a line of parking, they can make that twice as big, that would add another 10 to 20 parking stalls, right? So there's an opportunity there. You have the same issue, but we don't really do enough of that, in my opinion. So here's an opportunity that, <coughs> Hey, all I can say is no, right? right. You might as well ask if they can help downtown. Along the same lines as uh, at Mary Duncan School, they're removing those cubicles, I'm assuming fairly soon, since they've ripped all the hallway pieces off. And underneath there sits a gravel base already, which makes you think that wouldn't be a tough conversion. And along the same lines, I think we're going to see a variation request about potential clinic. That area is going to start becoming congested parking-wise. Why not we send a letter to the principal of Mary Duncan School, Karen Manch, as, long, uh, as well as the school board, and say, hey, here's our issue. Let's be part of the solution. Here's some parking. Shouldn't be too difficult to convert before they rip all the gravel out of there or come up with some other idea and, and look at promoting our downtown core. I sure don't have an issue with either one of those. Randy? If I can just comment on that, I know when uh, we were working with the mm -hmm. Regional Health Authority, we did approach Kelsey School Division, and uh, nice there's some you. problems with it just because it's a school division and when it comes to access land as far as rentals and stuff. But, so, yeah, I was going to say that's not saying that yeah. things haven't changed. Yeah. But I know we were told no in the past when we. It's good to go to the party with plan. Yeah. And I can understand that in the past if you're, you're starting from scratch, but here's almost a ready made parking lot for you. So. It just seems such a shame to see those portables coming down. But it is, and that's the way it is. Council Rock? Uh, just, just by way of a suggestion, uh, I note that you, you're sending it to the principal of Mary Duncan, and you're ceasing it to the school division. I, I would suggest uh, it, it should go to the school division and or both, hmm, simply, simply yeah. be, because it's going to be a school division decision. It's not going to be a principal making that I don't think so I would suggest putting it on your agenda with your school division joint committee mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's a good idea okay anything else on that all right we don't need a resolution to do this do we no I don't think so do you want letters sent then yes please or was it going on the agenda when you say agenda meeting for the next meeting so we would ask them yeah we can we'll see and then Kelsey's so uh, yeah we're sending a letter, letter, letter saying we'd like this Okay, we want 3.1 planning and development animal shelter, Councillor Gibb. Um, again, we've had numerous groups come talk about an animal shelter, and we sort of, they come with an idea and we say no, and then they go away, and I guess a different group comes back and we say no. And it, to me, looking operationally, we sort of have a pattern of, of not guiding them what would be acceptable. So where I'm from, there's sort of acceptable areas for an animal shelter or, or the SPCA, and they're usually in semi-industrial or light industrial areas, right? So uh, I don't know if there's any available lots on Morris Road, or there's already a subdivision plan on Grace Lake Road, where you, you have parcels of land next to a hydro line. I mean, in all fairness, people aren't going to be building homes under a hydro line mm -hmm. at this uh, day and age. So instead of us always Letting people come to us and say no and they go away mad because we said no. Say, hey, 
this isn't going to work, right? Like, we don't need an animal shelter in downtown, again, in my opinion, or in the, or in the park by the boat launch. That's not a good thing. <coughs> but it's certainly very valuable, and here's some two or three locations that if you guys can all work together, we can work with you and, and maybe come up with some sort of deal. Andrew, I'm pretty sure, did we not do this once before, uh, where we had a discussion in the previous term, previous term yeah. and somebody came, and we had this discussion, and we pointed them in the direction of lots out at the Morris Road, Grace Lake area, said you can have them for a buck and yeah. the only but where it, where it falls down is is that they have to be a corporation to purchase the land and so it, it always ends up that the issue becomes that they actually have no mechanism to actually purchase the land the people that come tend to be mm -hmm. uh, either you know they're not legalized entities able to purchase land and then develop a shelter it's, and so it, it always loses steam before it's able to turn itself into something so I mean, I don't disagree that, I mean, providing land is something that we should do. We've talked about that previously and offered it up, but that, that in, and of, in and of itself um, is not likely to, to result in an animal shelter because, you know, volunteers just don't have the uh, time and energy to sustain an animal shelter. That, that's the, the nature of that business is that it's supported somehow. Um, as a not-for-profit supported by governments of various levels. There is no other way that animal shelters run. And um, so, I mean, I'm, this is great. For sure, we can identify to anybody that might come that we have areas that we would sell for a dollar, but it's not really likely to change anything mm -hmm. um, unless something else changes on the landscape. For my, them, my thinking for them is that or they, for us. they came forward, the last group, <coughs> looking for a variation based on a piece of property they were going to purchase in the downtown core. Yep. So, and so this is a good response so to that, I, for sure. If, if, oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm assuming they've made some sort of investigation. Relax, Jen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> no, no. No, 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 that's, no, that's fine. Well, I just wanted to provide a definition of industrial light zone. It's uh, the zone provides land for the development of a warehouse and other low-impact industrial uses that are compatible with nearby residential or commercial uses. Industrial uses are permitted, which carry on their operations in such a manner that no nuisance factor is created or emanated. Container screening outdoor, outside for storage may be permitted, and an animal shelter would not be permitted there. So it would require a variation. Yeah. It's what we do best around here, is variation. Yeah. There is no zone within the town that permits for an animal shelter. So a zoning amendment would be required. And either the town could do the zoning amendment themselves, or you would put it to whoever. I think that, you know, the, the, the absolute most we can do to help these people, let's do, but uh, Andrew's right. They need to get incorporated. And uh, in, in f almost six years at this council table, um, I'll be, I'm going to say four or five times animal shelter has come forward, that, and it just, it just stalls. Were we not trying to get all the groups together? Were we not trying to do that as a council, trying to get, give them a place so that... But yeah, yeah, we told we've, them. We've, we've made the offer to... Yeah, we have made the offer yeah. and... I know that like nothing's come of it. Bonnie and Lorraine have met with each other because yeah. they're kind of working more towards like the spain and neutering problem and sure. solution and I think they were just having kind of difficulty sitting down with the other group but I mean again like those they're they're kind of two different priorities right like one's priority is the animal shelter the animal shelter and then the other one is like dealing with the problem we already have which is I mean stray animals and people not spain and neutering yeah. perhaps a gentle nudge Where's the camera? Perhaps a gentle nudge. <laughs> Try and see yeah. if we can't get everyone together. I think that's the first step. Like, yeah. the, if you have volunteers that are like-minded, I'm pretty sure it's not that hard to get an all for profit corporation off the ground. Um, but again, it's... You might need somebody to like, I don't know, lead that charge to get all for three sure. of those groups around the table. I don't know if... I mean, I think we've made that request a couple of times. Yeah. They sit down and come back to us with, like, your priorities, right? Like, yeah. So in terms of action items out of this here or direction for, for administration, like, I mean, so then we had a specific request from Lorraine, I think it was, right, yeah. that that's, they identified some properties. Can we formulate a written response to them to say, look, you know, we, we, we saw your proposal for the variation, couldn't do it, but, you know, there are areas here that we'd be willing to 
look at amendments uh, to vary to vary the zoning so that it could fit in this area if everybody feels like that's an area that's appropriate. And and that that in order for yeah. you know what that history would show that in order for any animal shelter to succeed, these groups are going to have to get together. So I mean, um, we can't lead that charge. We're going to have enough on our plates here to deal with. Um, I'm more concerned about people being displaced from homes than I am for dogs being displaced from homes here for the next little while. So um, you know they're going to have if it's if it's of grave importance to them, then they're going to have to get together and make it a a, a legitimate effort. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got that. <laughs> you look a little maybe confused. I'd use an exclamation mark you yeah. forget. <laughs> just basically trying to work together again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but also just yeah. point out that like there is to, yeah, to yeah. like rezone the the light industrial or whatever for the spot. Okay. Uh three point two, point one, two and three is all the same subject, isn't Eight. it? Bear with me, this is going to be a little convoluted, and it's just for information right now, but it's all dealing with the zoning bylaw. Northern Regional Health Authority is planning to build a medical clinic where, the Saint, where St. Paul's used to be across from Mary Duncan on 2nd Street. This property is zoned as open space recreational, which does not permit a medical clinic. However, there is a provision in the Planning Act that allows for a variation, which would allow for a change in the land use as long as the change is substantially similar to a permitted use. In this case, a hospital or personal care home is a conditional use. Therefore, a medical clinic is quite similar in use. This is the reason for variation number one. A hospital or personal care home, or the very first variation is approved, now a medical clinic um, would require a conditional use. A conditional use means that each time one of these is built in this zone, it has to be approved by council. This is because not all open space zoned sorry, not all space zoned as open space recreational is appropriate for a hospital or a personal care home. This is the reason for the conditional use. If this conditional use is approved, then they will need to meet the bulk requirements, which has to do with the property in the building. However, they do not meet, sorry, they do not meet these bulk requirements, which is the reason for the second variation. All three will be going to public hearing on September 6th. They can all be dealt with at the same time, but they have to be done in that order. Right. So each one is legitimate. I actually understand that. Makes that. Any sense. I, I understand it all, actually. So yeah, because this, this is a bylaw issue too. This is absolutely sad that we have to go through this. This is so imperative that we look at our zoning bylaw to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, this is almost a shame. It's the use is there. I don't. This is unfortunate that it has to go through this whole process. It's time, it's money, and it's, it's, we really need to get on those bylaws, guys. I can't stress that enough. I agree. And that zoning bylaw needs a lot of work. I it mean, we spend a lot time of time having work. public hearings and variations and all kinds of things. I, you'll never, I don't think, ever be able to rid yourself of them, but um, this is a perfect example of why we need to do some work on them. Councillor Rock? Uh, I, I agree with the concern. I've, when I looked at that and I looked at their survey diagram and whatnot, I was left being confused with regard to uh, the property. Are, were they looking at filling up that whole side of that block or was it only a portion thereof? And, and when we, we allow these things to go forward, what is there consideration for parking? Because parking around the hospital uh, on the one street is pretty busy with with people that I don't think necessarily live in front of those houses uh, So how, how do we accommodate some of those questions so that if we do approve it? We know that there's not going to be a problem later on so um, I think they have the latest greatest Square footage for building and, and parking requirements. I think you know with a variation of rezoning the land then everything would be yeah and I work with Sam, Chris, yeah. and Randy. You work? Yeah. Yeah, I work so, with Sam, Chris, and Randy. And my understanding is the, um, uh, the uh, medical clinic is uh, back at Treasury Board. Like oh, it, it is? Like it's uh, an old friend. Um, so I suspect that uh, we should be hearing good news fairly soon. Sorry, I just had a quick question. Like. When, when we look at this survey and it's showing what road, it's, is it showing, like, because there's a sidewalk here, is there not? 
Where? Well, like I'm just looking. Like it, yeah, it's a black detail. It's it shows right here that it's like right up against Second Street. Is yeah, it and that that'll be the requirement for the variation. It'll be coming right up to the sidewalk or right the up property property to the property line, which is the why they need a variation. Right up That's to okay, right up to the front. The yeah. sidewalk and that would still be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 okay, no, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. Build right up to the front, just like you do on the And this street. doesn't show the yeah. very, it just doesn't show the sidewalk because this is just just their their property. Yeah, it'd be nice to get a better view of their survey. Like, this is this is know. what a survey is. This no, is no, I know I realize that, but this doesn't it's show kind of drafting maybe an over. Uh, yeah, yeah, what he's saying is a schematic of the yeah. general area yeah. so that uh, it gives a sense as opposed to me trying to get on Google Earth right now to get a good look to understand exactly how that sits. Did you? It's not working well, though. I'm not, I'm not good at Google percent. Earth. I know. It's great googly moogly. There it is. Yeah, there it is. There. Yeah. So this is like the f like this, this is like the furthest right here, yeah. east second street. Oh yeah. yeah. So right east corner Kirk. of oh, yeah. the whole yeah. hospital Correct. area. Gotcha. Yeah. And I'm just exactly wondering how they're going to set up place. parking, like to get in there, like to drive in there, if they're going to drive all the way down where you come in to well, say Well, looking at the now. schematic, half yeah. the parking lot will remain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll be right off of Cook, you can come in that way. Because there's already... Yeah, true enough, there is that entrance. And there is the entrance off of, I forget the name of the street is, Ross. Ross. Yeah. Ross. There's an entrance there's off of Ross. They can be in the yeah, the Ross is, around. yeah, like to come to St. Paul's area. But that's, yeah, that's, we should but there's pull the description. Might even be two accesses from Cook. There is, yeah. One, you'd have to go all the way around St. Paul's again, but... Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else you ask? Yes, Brian? Well, I, I'm just wondering, is, is there a problem with us asking uh, the RHA to clarify that for us? Or is it something, well, this is all they got from, from for the survey, so that's all they're going to show us? Because the problem, the challenge is, is, well, if you make a decision with incomplete information, you generally make mistakes, and I would... You know, we've, we've had other issues with parking, and this could be, an, unless there's no parking on, on 2nd Avenue or something, and so, that way we leave there. So well, I yeah. think we would have the opportunity to ask that at the public hearing, right? That's what the public hearing is for, so that, like, if we have questions, we can ask then, and if they need to get us more information, yeah. they bring us Just, more information. So maybe for the public hearing, we could ask our own engineering department to provide an overview map that would yeah. show the general placement of this building in relationship to the lots that surround it, and then we can ask the question of the RHA how where parking sits within that general overview, because it doesn't really indicate on this survey. It's a survey for a specific lot. There's the building; it's placed there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't answer any questions about parking at all, um, and those are fair questions. Yeah, and and let them know ahead of time that yeah, these have come up so they don't get blindsided. Okay. Anything else on that? Again, I would really like to get moving on the whole zoning because this For sure. Let's would get it really going. make yeah, a, of an impact. Okay, so what... Um, We're not stopping the process with this. This needs yeah. to go as soon as possible, yeah. but this is a prime example of we say we're ready for development. We really need to go through this stuff and make sure we are. Yeah. For sure. Because this was shared with the developer, like they had about well, three different developers on it. This was shared with them months and months and months ago, but that message was not relayed back to our local area. Oh, really? So it made it an extra step for them to jump through. Yeah. Which, in all reality, that shouldn't happen. Well, anywhere they were going to build, they would need to to fall, be in contact with the local mm -hmm. municipality. Yeah. I don't care where they are. You know, they'd have to still talk to. That's their own fault for not checking that step out. But, but point taken, we need to. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, need to make sure. this. We need, yeah, definitely. Streamline. Okay. Is there a chief fire prevention officer? I thought he was looking at some of this stuff or whatever. Yeah, he's been helping too. Yeah. But when the building permit time comes, it won't be us. It'll be Office of the yeah. Fire Commission because it'll be a park. Too big, yeah. It's too big for what he's taking training for. The building's too big? Yeah. It's only 1,000 square feet. But when it hits into, when it has so many tents with people and stuff like that, it goes out of our league for regular residential. Oh. But, well, okay, now hold it. So in terms then of uh, having this uh, examination of the zoning bylaw, who is going to lead that charge? I would like to, I think between Jen and myself, we're the ones that are familiar with it. I think we need to go through it in detail. I've done this three times already. 
and it's never hit the table. Okay, well, we need So that. we need that ASAP. Okay. okay, sure. We need someone like that's willing to sit on the committee that understands the development and what the needs are. And pretty darn soon, because like I said, this is unfortunate. Yeah. This was obviously an oversight. It was a, like, pardon the pun, but it's like a no-brainer. It's an automatic that you would think, but it's not. No. This was something that Jen was able to get through another planner when we initially talked about it. They said it had to be all rezoning. So this was a much quicker way of doing it, but no, no. it was trying to go through three different angles here, where it should have been easy. It should have been, yes, we're doing this. It's permitted. Okay. All right, 3.3, uh, .3, Pineview Realty. The agreement with Steam with Pineview Realty expires on August 29th of this year. Pineview has spoken with five different people in regards to lakefront property. However, there were no offers made, and only one person supplied a reason for not making an offer, which was the property taxes. Um, my recommendation is to not renew the contract, and I think between Randy and I, we can answer the questions that come in. We We're have been anyway. anyways. Um, we need to come up with a plan for marking these lots, and we should probably budget for 2017. Put something in the budget for it. Sounds good. As much as I don't want to take it on, on, but the questions are basically... We're doing them anyway. We're, they're phoning, we're giving them answers, and then say, buddy, if you need anything else, you need to call Pine Gen. I was just going to ask, uh, with, with that change, everything's out there regarding signing remains, or does that go he, with the he can realtor? Pull it out. He it's his sign. It's his sign. Okay, that's yeah. Because then that's an additional potential cost for us, right? Which is why I suggest There is some signage project. out there that is the town of Boss. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. There's that's Pine View has one sign, and I think there's two town of the Boss signs. Two town of the Boss signs out there? Sure. I think we there's one like, yeah, right there, and then one. There's I'm sure we could buy it from him. What's he I'm pretty sure we could too. Yeah. Okay. So, so our rest of Mark, this is my personal opinion. I don't think you guys have enough time. I know you're more than capable of doing it. I know you answer questions, but and then as far as adding more money to sell like from lots that are tough, fill this wall to start. Appetite for that. I know there's more people, more sales even than me here, right? We're going to drop 30 grand and sell three lots. So why not just let it ride for another spring till we get through all the zoning stuff and everything else that's on the list to do. We're just adding to a list of things that makes it challenging to get some stuff done. Well, uh, like right uh, off the hop, we're talking about taking yeah. and buying the sign from There's a good case to be made there. Right? So um, I just feel like. Um, uh, we're just not doing anything about this, not paying attention, not caring, nothing. nothing. Um, so I believe in the deepest of my heart that when uh, hammers and nails and boards and things start happening out there, there will be a lot more attention paid. And so once we... There's a big beautiful house that's out there already. Pardon me? There's a big beautiful house that's out there already. I think one of the things that we've observed with this, though, like between Jen and myself, most people know it's a town of the Paul Watts, so they call us directly and they want to deal with the town directly. It's no shot at Jim, but nope. I think that's just the way people are. They know it's town lots, they know that we're going to have the questions and that they're going to have to wait through, through we, the real term. We've bird dogged a bunch of leads over to him that people have contacted us and say, most and we've told them you need to call. Yeah. And then by that point, we've taken <laughs> them off because they're going, geez, can't you tell us? Yeah. And I agree with you, Alan, it's not something more we want to take on by any means, but we're doing it unfortunately. It's just the way it's going. We might as well and we might as well make the mini, the, exactly, we've commissioned pretty much anything that's sold, period, that we've sold. Mm -hmm. And like, maybe all that's in the budget for 2017 is a hundred bucks to buy the sign off of him. Like, we're not saying that, I mean, we all know come budget time, things are going to get slashed and we're not going to put $30,000 in the budget to market lake, lake lots. But like I said, I mean, maybe you put like a couple hundred bucks to get like a decent sign or whatever, right? Like well, update your information on the website. Take mm -hmm. a picture of that beautiful home out there and say, hey, here's our first one up. Yeah. How it that way. Dude, Absolutely. There's ways of doing it. You can do Facebook advertising for yeah. super cheap, like... Where you set it up and it just does it for you and you don't have to worry about anything, right? Like, 
Okay, so we'll need to pass a resolution to, or just end, Does just end the contract? Does I want to lake lots for free? Is that what you just oh, said? Oh, there is one. You so should beautiful. you should send your photographer out there. Yeah. Yeah. No. Beautiful. How are you supposed to know? Okay. So we I believe we are. We have a consensus there anyway. Uh, you know, I, I, I leave it I leave it to your guys' best judgment, but I, I got to be honest. I mean, I know that at this point in time, there's such a lull that it's kind of slow. If it starts to pick up, though, and people start buying, then all of a sudden it's become a more imminent demand on your time. And so totally up to you guys. Um, I don't want to say, no, you can't, and I don't want to say, yeah, you should. Um, I just want to make sure that you guys have really thought about whether or not and maybe it is the case that there's nothing really gained other than he answers a phone and gives them some information and then they just come right back to you and, and have a bunch of questions. So if that's the case and you're legitimately okay with it, you know exactly what's involved, go for it. What I am concerned about is that, so I mean we started there and then all of a sudden we started talking about, well there could be advertising and signs and you could do Facebook and this. So if Jen and Randy are doing it, then we're not doing Facebook advertising and finding lots of signs, doing lots of stuff. They're just answering questions and selling lots if the opportunity comes versus marketing. So, I mean, it's kind of gone in the reverse. We were looking for Pine View to market the things, kind of turned into them just kind of posting up some signs, and then we help do paperwork. We're not doing any advertising at all. I just want to make sure it doesn't all of a, turn, all of a sudden kind of turn into the generalized expectation that that means these guys are going to be doing marketing. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about they're answering the phone calls and giving the information and maybe selling a lot. Mm -hmm. I agree 100% because I'm not a marketing person. No. If you need someone to market them, you need but that's, someone to stuff. But that's where the pitfall is, and that's the part that I'm concerned about. So as long as everybody's expectation is clear that this is just about our administration answering phone calls, providing information, and signing the required paperwork if necessary, but not chasing down. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's purchasing the sign from Pineview or whatever, but we're not going to start looking for them to do more than no. the basics. No, no marketing. And again, we are heading into a bit of a slow season. So let's have a look at this again in the spring and see where that takes us. Okay, is that fair? Okay. I, don't know. I just got an email over the weekend. The guy's been emailing me constantly while I've been off, and he wanted to go through the time. He wants to do okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Rock? Uh, after listening to Councillor Forward, I, 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 have, I have to share that, that similar concern in terms of you can't be in the business of selling lots unless you're prepared to go out and do show and tell and here's the post and here's everything and whatnot and if we're if we're transferring that to to our senior administration uh, they should at least be given the opportunity to come up with a business plan that would be work for them because it, it may be something that that can be done and then doesn't become a burden but if all of a sudden it did then we don't necessarily we can't always reverse it and throw the switch and go back oh well we'll we'll just do this and and it made that the option may no longer be there it doesn't uh, it I may not I, I reduce your your phone calls and whatnot and yet the things you have to deal with but it may provide you greater support when you do need it if you do have a, a fish on the line if I can use the term and uh, somebody that's interested Another play on words there. It was. My intention was just that Randy and I would look after agreements and just yeah. for now, yeah. it's yeah. pretty much yeah. going to trap, trap people. I believe that basic. if we get in a situation, folks, where um, working on these lots is taking up all of their time, then that's a really good problem and we'll, we'll work our way through it. I can further comment that if I don't have to run the airport anymore, I could probably spend a lot of time on this kind of stuff. And we'll be talking more about that. You should say that you're not allowed to you're not allowed to sell any lake lots until you find an airport manager. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done that like about six months ago. That's why I didn't, that's why I didn't say it. I'm afraid you reach across here. <laughs> so we're not 100 percent there, but we have consensus. So let's just see where this takes us. Okay. So is, is no, the consensus is actually 100 percent. So. Consensus is 100 yeah, percent. Yeah. So, so we're kind of leaning in favor. Of it. So you, you might have majority, but not consensus. Yeah, majority. I'll take. You're right. So we, at our next meeting, we're going to have a resolution not to renew? No, we don't no. need a resolution. We just won't renew. Only to enter into the agreement or to renew. So the agreement expires. When the agreement expires, it expires. It's yeah. over. 
It's not renewed. We, need, we would need a resolution if we're going to renew. Because it says the agreement says right. from this period to this period. So if we don't renew, we don't need a resolution. We would only need the resolution if we renew for another period. But if we were do if we, if we had a resolution saying we're not renewing because those those you know some of the duties have been transferred down. Uh, otherwise, where is it on the record? Like it's just to down. me, it's it's not a decision of if it, if the decision of council that's really being asked for is to authorize our CAO and our assistant CAO to to perform those those duties uh, with regard to the lake lots. Aye. And that's that's something a little different. That's all I thought. I bow I bow to your decision. If we need a resolution, I don't see how we do. But we'll check into it a little more. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Four point one payroll and accounts. Some disbursement report. Do you like that? Yeah, better? I do. That's, that's great. great. <laughs> Is that Jody's language? Yeah. yeah. And you'll notice, I, mean, I have no idea what those words mean, but that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you'll notice on the next one, it'll, the, this actual report will look a little bit different because there's, what were what they called? Yeah. Yeah, the, electronic the electronic transfers will also be on here too. They'll show up and there'll be no checks in conflict because we're not really 100% sure what that was all about. But anyways, we'll need a resolution to pass payroll or be like a service number. It's just accounts, checks number 17527 to 17568 in the amount of $127,588.07. And there was nothing that stood out in the We were checked to ourselves though. We were checked out of the call. That would have been for payroll where employees get payroll deductions oh, and okay. then it goes back. If that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense to me. Okay. So we need a resolution. Have a resolution then yeah. for this meeting. 4.2 Northern and First Nations Community Cleanup Prize. Okay, Town of the Paw won the Northern and First Nations Community Cleanup First, Pro First Place Winners Community Prize. prize. Oh, sorry, I was excited that we won. Yeah. <laughs> prize of $5,000 through the Multi Material Stewardship Manitoba, along with the Canadian Beverage Container Recycling Association and its Recycling Everywhere program. It has been determined by both of those groups that the best use for these funds would be to supply the town with 750 residential blue bins. Currently there are 1,600, sorry, 1,650 single family dwellings in the pot. The total cost of purchasing all a blue bin for every home would be approximately $11,000. If both the town of the pot and the recycling center were to cost share the remaining bins, each party would have to pay approximately $3,000. MMS is still waiting to hear back from the recycling center if they're willing to cost share this. If the town is in favor on the remaining bins that the, the PAW is funding, the town logo would be on there as well as the MMSM and the CBCR label, logos. Um, I would recommend taking part in this even if the recycling center doesn't. I have spoken with Jody and during budget there had been $10,000 put aside within the community enhancement fund for economic development. This money was for admin to use at their discretion. Comments? Sorry, Ooh, everybody's got comments, Alan. You had mentioned, Andrew, that curbside pickup's going well. And my question is that that's great. They think we should buy blue bins, but does that mean we're going to get any more recycling happening by having? Yeah, and so. There's two, my part, okay. two parts. Court, court they should be, to me, that's great that the government's saying, hey, you want a prize? And here's how we're going to tell you how to spend it, right? Why aren't we going to the recycle center and saying, hey, what do you guys need to increase your capacity and use that money? Can I just like maybe, I don't know, like correct that a little bit just because it was like TPCRC organized the community cleanup so it wasn't that the government then came back and said, hey, here's $5,000, good, you won, and now you have to use it this way. What happened was the money came to us or came to TPCRC and then they're like mandated as to kind of how they're supposed to use it. Like it's supposed to go to like promote recycling in the community. So TPCRC thought that with the recycling center starting curbside pickup, it might be a good idea to get blue bins for residents so that's where the idea came from that's funny because tprc is mentioned once in this letter no. or through one phone call i had How sad that's, that's where the idea once. came up with yeah, yeah, that's the, the idea of recycling from. is promoting recycling How yeah. do we get more of it? so i can offer that this was discussed at our board meeting last week and we as well didn't necessarily think it was a great idea um, for a couple of reasons one point was that the town is a funder of the recycling center and so to ask the recycling center and the town to co-share the costs seems a little bit like 
you know, hitting the town twice for, for something. Um, and then to the other end, um, we just don't feel like there's that kind of need for that many bins in town. A, a lot of people still have the ones from the last time the curb side actually uh, ran. I, I have four still from 17 years ago when curbside existed or whatever. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> What's the logo on it? The Army Kills you. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but, but to that end, right, I mean, there are 1,650 single family dwellings, but um, we felt like, you know, the, the, the reality was, was that a, a lot of them would end up either just getting um, used for other purposes or kicked around or whatever. And we thought that there was a better way to use that money than to do bins. It is meant to promote recycling. The recycling center may have some other ideas about how best to use it, either in promotion or through the provision of materials or whatever, right? So I think it's a great prize and it's a great recognition. Um, I'm just not sure that spending the money entirely on blue bins is a good idea. To have, I don't know, 400 uh, bins come to the PAW cost shared that are available for a buck or something so that people just don't come and say, yeah, I'd like a bin, and they take it home and use it for their garden, grass well, clippings or whatever, you know. Yeah. You know, so I mean, if it's, and then you could use the buck to push out some more promotional materials for the trade show or whatever, right? So it's great, kind of a great idea, but kind of not. Um, and so maybe it would be good to just ask the recycling center for, and I wasn't aware that, that uh, TPCRC was kind of facilitating some of this. Um, so maybe it would be good for TPCRC to get in touch with Marge directly at the Recycle Center and just have a chat with her and, so that she's clear on what, what uses are appropriate mm -hmm. and then uh, she may have some very good ideas about uh, where best to spend that money. Um, I would suggest, like our ED just came back from that leave and stuff, so she's kind of just jumping into like what's already been right. put into place. So. Um, yeah, and I mean, TPCRC has its process, so what would probably happen is, you know, it would go to Darcy that, uh, maybe come up with a different idea, and then it'll go to a board meeting there for it to get brainstormed, and then it'll go back to recycle everywhere. So is, is the money sitting with TPCRC right now? I don't or? know if they've actually officially received, no, they haven't received a check, actually. They're coming to town on September the 23rd, I believe, and they want to do, like, an appreciation barbecue for all those who participated, and then they'll do, like, a... A picture and present them with the check for five thousand dollars and i'm assuming that they would have brought the bins or whatever with them when they came this sounds like a call from the captain you've won five thousand dollars i think it cost you six thousand dollars i'm just trying to find the it's email that i got dipping. that kind of says like what it can be used for but before it goes back to the tpcrc board to me i think we need the recycling center board involved in our marge so here's what, okay, here's three things you could use it for. That's the one we actually need it for. Yeah. Right? Instead of it going back and saying, you know, here's what we think. What do you think? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, not such a nice thing well, work. and one of the things that we were talking about is that we need to modify some trailers. So we have our trailers that we're using for curbside collection, which are just basically the guys are using the trailers that were meant to be parked. And so it's not incredibly efficient. They're making it work. But one of the things that we looked at at the last meeting was some serious modifications to those trailers. So lots of welding, lots of whatever, so that when they pull into the center, they are just, poof, dropping all of the recycling and out the door it goes, and then it's all incredibly more efficient than what's going on. So that that in and of itself may be an idea that, you mm -hmm. know, if Marge can stick a price tag to that with a quote from Excel, um, there'd be a great photo op to have them stand in front of one of the recycling trailers that exists and say, you know, this trailer that was used to be there identified for, for a, a, a location pickup will now be running curbside with these modifications it will be incredibly more efficient or whatever. Mm -hmm. And MMSM pretty, could get yeah. their logo on a trailer yeah. or something and or whatever. it's pretty ambiguous. It just says to be put towards a recycling initiative within the winning community um, and the program helps your community combat litter and increase recycling awareness. Plus that would service all of the regions, the RM, OCN, um, everywhere that those trailers go for curbside pickup. So, so I can look at the minutes how this Recycling the tr recycled trailers. Yeah, um, so I'm not sure where, <laughs> not sure how that gets wheels beneath it then. Um, maybe the best thing to do, maybe the best thing to do would just be for our administration to talk to March at the center and say, um, this is what we reviewed. 
I can talk to Marge and let her know that we had the conversation. And we've had that conversation at a board level. She would probably be able to tell you pretty quickly whether or not that's a easily workable solution in the short term to make this thing go. In fairness, so I think what we should also be doing is because this was through the TPCRC, I think we should be sending them an email or a letter saying thanks a lot for, for getting this funding. Yeah. We've looked at it. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're yeah. looking at. Here's where we're headed. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. We would really appreciate it. Yeah, so I mean, uh, yeah, it, it went from there to the town, to the recycle center, so we could have Marge produce a response back that says, hey, that's awesome, but we don't think that would fit well. Here's a better option. What do you think? And then that could come yeah. full circle back, and then maybe that's the easiest way to trigger it. So, uh, yeah. Okay. I'll have to make a note about that one. You might have to send me an email, Jen, to remind me to talk to Marge about that and get her to send a response to that letter on behalf of the board. 4.3, Fallen Heroes Foundation. Yep. Fallen Heroes of Manitoba has found two more residents from the fall and would like to frame them, frame these and would like the town to contribute to the foundation. Andrew and Jim would probably be familiar with this. They, they were veterans, I guess, and they were pictures and they were put in frames and they went around town and asked people to donate or sponsor one. They're all hanging in the Legion now. And they found two more and they would like the town to sponsor one. Their price is gone up, I see. They're right there. The marquee sponsor is 5000 platinum is 2500 gold sponsor is 1000 silver is 5 bronze is 250 Co-sponsors 125, and each donation of $500 will commission one physical memora memorial print of a fallen hero. As I said last time, it was only 250 a picture. Um, I'm suggesting, due to budget constraints, not to participate this year. So it would be a thousand bucks, basically. If we were to do, I know Just a number of out. other businesses in town, like yeah. B&W. I'm pretty sure the Legion did one to the paper, Jen. There was a little controversy when it did start the first time because there was a lot of people that thought it was a scam. Yeah. And then we got that all straightened out and it wasn't. It's and they're beautiful. Good. They look very beautiful in the Legion. Yeah. They do. I've seen that. Yeah. But maybe it's an opportunity for someone else local to sponsor them also. How am I going to sleep if we say no to the veterans? Yeah, you know what? No, this I, is a tough one. It is tough times or whatever, but um, i got to say, these, these guys made some... Uh, ultimate sacrifices here and that's not something that should be forgotten and uh, I know a thousand dollars is a thousand dollars that's all that can be a lot of money but if there are two that are from the paw and we're being asked whether or not we want to sponsor and we can have those prints how many in the sorry, legion how many people how many were there last time and how much did we do well there were quite a few there was, we only get the one but there were quite a few when they when they started this I think, program I think Jen do you recall how many were in the legion there's quite nine a few. or ten. I think there's, there's it's nine. It's a full wall. Yeah, two on each. Like one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six. We should be doing at least one. Yeah. We're gonna do one. I think so. I'll do two. I mean, if we did one last time, I mean, other obviously other groups are also sponsoring and whatever. We don't need to sponsor everything, but it would be, I think it would be, shallow not to sponsor one. My opinion. How? I, I'm all in favor of, of going ahead and doing it and whatnot. Our, our challenge always is we don't have a budget line for it that I know of. Uh, so it, it becomes yet another one of those where we're spending money we don't don't have a, a lot of to it. Um, you can use the budget that was in there for my expense for I was travel. Just going to see your travel expense well, yeah. budget would be perfect. <laughs> I'm going to say, well, if there's seven of us, how much do we have to so kick I, in to reach I don't go anywhere, so. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> then I win the competition. Yeah. $72. Yeah. Do yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you don't go anywhere either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so we'll, we'll do one in. It's $500 per print. Additional There we go. That's a good yep. spot to take it from. Well, I'm hoping five weeks. I'm hoping when. <laughs> I know, I don't want it to go this week because it's Ryan's birthday, so we're not going to No, it's not going to go this week. Next 
So we're doing one or two. Let's keep the show on the road. Yeah. Here. How much? I'm going to let's see. Let's do two. I think we do two. I think the. I think that it's at least six hundred for just the rental plus staffing costs. So, I mean, we've been in each week. Each week. Yeah. I think we've been in there four. Three weeks. It's just easier. Was it three? Four. 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 And we have at minimum. I mean, it's going to be at least five. It's going to be on. Yeah. It doesn't go bad. That's a. That's five more times. It's, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's a good okay, spot we can to do, take Okay, we can come. afford two then. This is yeah. what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if Amber will agree with me, but... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, that's... Wait, wait, why are we taking... I thought we were taking this no, from Andrew's no, we're not. We're not, taking it, we're not taking it from Kelsey Rec. We'll, we'll... I'll work with Between the seven one. of us, we'll, we'll cough it. Do you want one or two is the question? Two. I want two. two. Is that the consensus? Thousand dollars? Yeah, if we did one before. Yeah, no, I, I think I think one if we did one. Then let's. I mean, other people will sponsor these things as well. But okay. it shows that it shows that we don't that we're not being inconsiderate to the events of the past and the sacrifices of the past. In the meantime, we have to be diligent about our financial situation. So I think one is is a fair and logical number. Okay, one. one. Chad. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. yeah. Crystal. Yeah. Alan. Okay. Said one, yeah. One? Okay. And I want one. Jody to sign the $500. Mm -hmm. It'll be a resolution. Okay. 4.4, .4, review of council's conduct. Councilor Rock. Uh, yes. Uh, it's difficult dealing with this, especially with all the news we got today, but I think it's important that we, we council go forward with it and discuss it because there was such a uh, public interest and concern with regard to... Uh, where where council's going and uh there's there's that sense that they they don't have the confidence in council that they, that they should have and that sort of thing uh there is a code of conduct uh there's a note we were required to swear there are rules and regulations under the municipal act uh and what i'm suggesting here is for council to consider how we would move forward and, and review the situation and and make whatever determinations the collective group decides to do going forward to to get some clarity on this and, and regain some of our, our respect from the community uh, it's, it's a real challenge right now there were a great many people here last week there was another uh, community member here tonight uh, it's it's hurt us and then when you look beyond the fire department issue then there's other issues where uh, some of the conduct of, of council was challenged because of confidentiality issues and whatnot so we we need to sit down as a council and, and we're coming up on two years so it's it's a to me it's a good opportunity let's sit down uh figure out if we have to have a special <coughs> meeting or whatever we choose to do but let's let's look at some of these things and and move it forward so we can get some closure on these things because it's important for all members at the, at the council table to be able to move forward with, without these these Things hanging over them or anything else. Sorry, Andrew. Uh, just for clarification, Brian, because I'm not entirely sure that I'm clear. Are you wanting to review conduct, like you know, so people's behavior with respect to handling of an issue, or are you are you wanting to review the issue that was brought forward and how that issue came to pass and the series of events that took place. Like, I'm not sure that I'm clear on what you're wanting to do. Are you wanting to review the actual uh, incident, if you want to call it that, that occurred, and then the steps that were taken after the incident? Or are you wanting to review people's reactions and or comments or behaviors in relationship to that thing? Well, if we, if we look at the, uh, at the record of council and we look at, at, the, at the minutes and whatnot and the information that came forward to council, things got called into question that there hadn't been an opportunity to do really respond as, as council in that so if we're, if we're going to do that we need to take some time and, and review these things uh, and then and then make some sort of a comment or statement or whatever going forward uh, if we if we don't do that then then the, the gray cloud is just going to follow us around and i think it is really an issue that that affects us all in our ability to move forward because every time we, we go to speak or, or our leaders speak, you can run into that problem where where people are distracted, and we need to get rid of those distractions. 
don't know if that answers you. Yeah, I'm still not, I have to be honest, I'm still not entirely clear. And I'm not even sure that you can do one without doing the other, um, necessarily. And, and I, and I, while I understand your point of view, um, I'm just not sure that part of our problem isn't continuing to, part of the issue that I see for me in hindsight here is that what keeps coming to our table is not something that requires a decision. So all of last council meeting, what came to our table was nothing except comments and statements, even tonight from the citizen that, that spoke to us. Um, she didn't actually have a question. Um, she had a statement of concern. Her email was a statement of concern. Uh, it, it pointed out specific things and said she wasn't happy with those things. But that there was no, there is no call to question. Without a call to question, we can't take action. Um, and so unless somebody is willing to put forward a resolution specifically that says, you know, uh, I want this action to take place, and I want to put that on the table as a motion, and I want a seconder, and I want a decision. Everything that we've been discussing has been without the requirement for a decision to be made. It's just always kind of like, well, that's not right, or you're not behaving fairly, or you're being mean, or, or I'm being mean, or, or I'm being too loud, and I'm talking too much, or, because I can do that sometimes. I just keep talking and talking. But my point is, we seem to lose focus because we're not actioning at the table questions that require decisions, or decisions that require answers, I should say. And, and so I don't, I understand perfectly where you're coming from. I have had the same feelings of frustration about why aren't we getting anywhere with this? And I've come to the conclusion because it, it is because there is no question at the table for requiring us to make a decision and provide an answer. Uh, and so to that end, even your issue that you identify, it doesn't specifically say this is the outcome that I'm looking for, so this is the question that I'm putting forward. I want this person to conduct this review at this time, whether that be, you know, a committee or, you know, it's just kind of a generalized, things didn't go well, we should look at it and do something about it. That's not specific enough. I guess that's my point here with this. It's not so specific that I can look at that and go with conviction, yes, I'm absolutely in favor that what you're talking about makes <coughs> sense to do and that it will actually limit distraction and if we're eliminated as opposed to create more distraction. You understand where I'm coming from? Maybe I, maybe I sound just as I want to, clear <laughs> to you as you did to me, but I, I just don't feel like there is a, an element here that, I'll, that has enough body for me to with conviction make a decision one way or another whether or not this is something I even agree with. You know what I mean? What would be the harm in reviewing your code of conduct and just sitting back and having a little reflection on what has happened and how we're going to move forward on this? I, I don't would, would there be anything wrong with that? Look through our code of conduct, what the responsibilities are, how comfortable everybody was with their decision, and move on. We need to move on. Part of the training in October. Yeah, I think that's going to be amazingly great. So here's my concern, is that I think we need that training in October. And I don't want this to take up 80% of the time that we're doing this training. This is a big issue. It needs to be dealt with on its own. So how would you suggest? Well, um, I would think that we would need to agree to have a meeting, the, the seven of us, with you folks, and close our doors and uh, have our words and then come forward and move out of this. Yeah. It I think it's quite evident everybody needs to move on and today was a prime example of oh my god look at some of the community issues one was the shaw cable we were kind of behind the eight ball because we had so much other things that we were focusing on shaw cable was a big impact to our community and that's somewhere we could have maybe focused a lot of our attention on but we had so many other smaller things and and they were big to some and, and i'm not making light of that but we focused so much attention on some of this stuff we really missed out on a lot of the big things that are affecting all of our entire community too and we can't lose sight of that and I think maybe I'm, I'm talking out of turn but I'm thinking maybe that's where the closure is we need to acknowledge this this happened how are we going to fix it moving forward we need to move forward because we still have a community to run yeah I've Sorry, that was just no, but that, that, that. you just you mirrored my words so I mean that's that's what I would love to see happen and really, the sooner the better. Yeah, I, I'm a little busy this week, but um, you know, next week is great. The week after, even. Oh, I, I agree with. I agree with uh, 
the mayor's suggestion that let's let's meet and talk about it because this is one of the things that's lacking is sometimes we don't get those opportunities to meet and talk about it and flesh out whatever action if any is required how do you move things forward if you don't talk about it first uh, we so spent two weeks trying to see how we can catch someone slipping up that's so. craziness that's just craziness can't do that anymore. can we look at something next week sure <coughs> good for sorry I'm, I'm like, again i'm i'm not 100 percent clear on what what we're going to discuss I, I just don't understand what we're going to discuss it's it's this is some highly personal stuff and we're going to sit down and it's i is it going to turn into a mudslinging type thing like i just don't get where where we're going to end up at the end of it i don't know i'm fine with meeting i'm fine with meeting i just don't want it to de devolve into something that that is just mudslinging and and just i don't know venting and whatever but if we can have some real actions that that and some real progress that can come from us meeting, I'm fine with meeting. So. Can we not just do it as an in-camera portion of our, of our uh, um, amend the agenda going into our in-camera portion tonight? Or if tonight is not appropriate at the next council meeting? I mean, realistically, what's going to if we choose to have a special in-camera meeting, because it will have to be a meeting that is it's not a special meeting, it's not going to change. I mean, the reality is that it will be an opportunity to review information that the general public is not able to review in its entirety with everybody at the table so that everybody is entirely clear about what exists and what does not exist and what's appropriate in terms of information that's available to them and information that's not so that there's clarity across the entire table about what's appropriate but none of that will really change there will be no outcome from that meeting that um, that would change any circumstance so much that it requires a special meeting in, in my opinion anyway Unless people really feel like in term, it, it, that time is of the essence with it and therefore a special meeting is required. And if people feel that way, then the mayor will just call it a special meeting yeah, as, long I, as, as, I long as, uh, as long as council is okay with it. I don't want to put it off for a month or two or three, but, you know, I'm <coughs> a week or two. We've been going on this for five months anyway. Yeah, I Which I think know. is now hitting the point of exhaustion. Oh, so that's where it's like we yeah. need to move on regardless. What's done is done. We can't fix what's been done. So then maybe time, maybe then time is of the essence, essence, and you should call the special meeting, and then it's and then it is uh, entirely focused on one issue only, and, um, and I think it that gets that everybody would be on the same page. Beneficial, just because sometimes, I mean, at the end of the meeting, you're tired. Do you really want to sit here for another? I mean, it's not going to be a five-minute conversation, right? So. It's not. I love sitting here for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your sugar. <laughs> so, 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 make it, so make it a special meeting for next week sometime then. Okay. Although I'm away on Monday. Okay. Can we, if possible, can we do it not during working hours? It's my first No, no, I, no, it has to be an evening. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, oh, yeah. all days are busy. No, my days are yeah. busy. Yeah, busy, 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 busy. I go back to work on Monday. Something would have to be after what six. What you do? <laughs> that was a lot of us. Let's take Alan's yeah, travel budget and get some pizza. <laughs> Loan all yours. I know. Yeah, it was mine. I haven't got anywhere yet. Any day that works for you guys next week, so we can. Do okay. Well, I'm I'm thinking um, for me. Uh, uh, Wednesday the thirty first. That's looking like my best opportunity. Um, Sounds good. What did you say? Wednesday, Wednesday the thirty first. Wednesday the thirty first. Welcome back. Barbecue, academic planning. Yep. Wednesday the thirty first at six. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Someone bring the brownies. And if you guys can send me an email if there's anything specific that you want uh, added as information other than what's already on the agenda. Okay. We're going to have an agenda. Or just what, I would what, think what, so. This is the agenda. agenda the but just pretty much it's okay. just there's a couple of things that were brought forward, the policy and the procedures and sure. stuff. And if there's anything else, let me know. <laughs> 4.5 outdoor rink update. Councilor Gibbs. So a few months ago, I requested that we uh, hold off on clawing back the over budget amount from the ball diamonds, which was 22,000. And minor hockey had committed some funds to the outdoor rink project, and Rotary had uh, committed $10,000 and applied for a grant. 
which I think they're going to find out in the next two to four weeks. But in the interim, Rotary has uh, committed an additional $25,000 to the project. So just a heads up, uh, getting closer to being a doable thing, especially if the grant comes through. Yeah. So Good to know. Canada one. Doable this year or doable next year? No, it could be. You're going to get hired. Could be. Yeah. You're going to need a public truck. Okay. I thought we had a public truck. No. No one around here has one. What are those? Or? I don't know. <laughs> Two and a quarter. Are they? Are they? Sure. We can guess. It's $2.50. Uh, <laughs> 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 I was thinking of buying one one day. Yeah. <laughs> well. <coughs> that were. Do we have fire okay. items over there? Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else on that? Uh, 5.1 job descriptions. Is part of our last. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought we were having Jody talk to us. That's no, good. Gary. Gary? Gary? No. Oh, no, sorry. Carrie, it's only Monday. As part, no, it's me. It's me, not you. It's me. As part of our last negotiation requirement of the QP, the Joint Job Description Committee was to review certain clerical positions within our organization. The current job descriptions were very dated and needed to be reviewed. During this process, it was determined that we were going to eliminate two full-time permit positions, which has been done. Um, attached are the updated job descriptions for the engineering clerk. Administrative Finance Clerk, Payroll Clerk, and Utilities Property Tax Clerk. The job description had been reviewed by the Union Management and the Human Resource Officer, and the employees were part of the process too. They had input and everything. So we're just looking for resolutions for these job Randy? descriptions. If I can commend the Union and the Town Managers for assisting and working very cooperatively in doing what's best for the Town and cost savings. They work very well together, and kudos to both. Good stuff. Any other comments on this? So just so I'm clear, the only changes were the we additions? We eliminated a lot of positions, okay. got rid of redundant stuff that using the typewriter and things like that, right? Updated. Still like, carbon right. copies. You guys don't use typewriters anymore? I saw a typewriter. What about a photostat? That was on yeah, there. Yeah, photostat. <laughs> 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 Can you photostat that for me? Yeah. And it was, it was like a stetner, wasn't it? it used to go some of the things were just very nitpicky, like Smell the unlocking the door. I mean, really, just... Okay. So it's just the question resolution. Okay. Bring it forward next uh, meeting then. Okay. Uh, let's see then. Uh, Councillor Morris, move us in camera. Uh, be it resolved that we now do in-camera portion of the committee of the whole meeting with Mayor Scott and the chair to discuss matters requiring our attention. Okay.